Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on the topic of end-to-end -end supplier information management strategy, which we'll refer to as SIM from now on. And in today's session, which is the first in this series of webinars, we'll start right at the beginning and dive deeper into those initial phases, which is focused on building the case for a SIM solution. Today we'll explore those initial steps on the journey towards the supply information management solution. So how does one articulate the problem? How do you obtain the mandate to solve the problem? And how do you bring the project to life? The next in this series will then move on to implementation and we'll round off with a discussion on what value SIM unlocks for the business in our third part. But for today's topic, I'm delighted to be able to welcome an expert in this field to guide us through those initial phases. We're joined today by Stefan Sakura. Stefan is Associate Director, Global Procure to Pay at Mondelez International. Mondelez sits among a class of leaders who are putting supplier information management and supplier experience right at the heart of their digital transformation. Before we start today's session, just a few admin points to bear in mind. The webinar will be available for on-demand listening after today's event. And during the course of the discussion, please do put your questions into the chat box and we will answer those that we can at the end of the session. If there's any that we don't get to today, we will follow up after on those. So thank you, Stefan, for joining us. And I'm happy that you could join us today. And I'd love to start the discussion by, first of all, asking you to tell us a little bit more about your background and your journey to your position today at Mondelez. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for having me today. Uh, so uh, my background, so I, I'm working with this company and with, uh, with another company, which was Craft Food. With, with Mondelez is the split off for now more than, than 30 years. And my journey has really been to build an expertise into the, the procurement space. So really understanding the process, understanding the system and make sure that I'm, uh, I'm able to deliver the right process uh, for, for the company. Uh, so in, in the last uh, uh, seven years, you know, I have implementing solution uh, around the P2P process, so procure to pay process. And uh, I'm also uh, working in charge on the supplier management uh, solution to ensure that we have an efficient way to uh, manage our supplier within, uh, within Mondelez. Fantastic. And that sort of leads me actually to uh, to my next question. Um, could you tell us a little a little bit more about Supplier Central as a project? So um, it, its background and, and some of its objectives. Yes. So uh, Supplier Central, and that's the, 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 the name of the tool or the way we name the tool to manage our supplier now, uh, came from uh, a project we started three years ago. And that was a, an overall project called IDOLS where we wanted to transform and digitalize the way we manage procurement uh, within Mondelez. Uh, as part of that project, there was uh, three main pillars that we have worked on. Uh, one was concerning the buyer, and we call, we, we call that buyer central. So that's really a tool for the buyers to be able to manage their, their own activities, having some reminders, having some workflows and things like that. Another one, which was really on data analytics, and, and you know now that's that's something which is more and more important. So so we build the data lake reporting and uh, connectivity to be able to give to the buyers all the information concerning you know the purchase order and all data they need to do their their, their business. And the third pillar has been to make sure we improve and increase the collaboration with our suppliers. And, and for that, so that's what we created Supplier Central. Uh, as a, a starting point and a main point of contact for the supplier and the, the tool itself or the process itself, which is uh, managed with the with the X solution, is to make sure that uh, we connect in an easy way the buyers and the supplier so that they can share their information, but also uh, share dashboard, share action plan, uh, share information that could be interesting from uh, for the supplier and make sure that we make that uh, that dialogue and that partnership between the buyer and the supplier the, the the easiest as possible so that the buyer can concentrate on adding value uh, to the company. 
And of course, supplier central means that Mondelez has a fully digital supplier management solution deployed globally, but not all enterprises are in that position. So without an initiative or project such as supplier central, what would be some of the challenges or obstacles that you would expect to see perhaps in its absence? Yeah, so th there is a lot of challenges when, when you don't have uh, a digital solution like that. So we, we have, you know, and, and before Super Central, uh, we already have a three year journey uh, on, on trying to standardize the way we manage master data. So in large, especially in large company, but even medium companies, when you start to have supplier uh, available in multiple countries, potentially in multiple ERPs, one of the things which is really critical is to make sure that you can, you can see, you know, for example, how many suppliers do you have? What is the spend for a specific supplier? And when you start to have the data, you know, dispersed in multiple systems, what was happening even before uh, within Mondelez is that we were creating the supplier multiple times. So when you were trying to get uh, the full information about where you stand with a supplier, well, you were not able to get that easily. So people have to look in different systems and get the information and then uh, collect them together. Uh, so that's really something for us which was important. The fact as well that in the past, you know, the process to create a supplier was different in each country or each region, which is also a problem because when you think now at the global risk that you can have, you know, don't forget that supplier is also everything about uh, compliance, the risk of fraud and things like that, the effectiveness of your payment process. All of that, if you manage it, you know, uh, really locally and manually, it's creating a lot of error. It's not giving us the, uh, the guarantee that the information is correct and that uh, we take everything possible to reduce and, and, and remove the risk on the compliance side. So I think there, there is some of those, those aspects. There's a lot of other things linked to that, but that's the main things if you want when you don't have a centralized digital system that's creating extra workload uh, over, uh, everywhere within the organization. And you touched upon um, the subject of, of master data there. And of course, poor data quality is one of the issues that's frequently mentioned as a driver for, uh, for implementing a SIM solution. But also because it's a data problem, an IT-led or a data-led solution is often the route that, that many choose. So that could mean that the issue perhaps sits elsewhere. So how do you obtain the mandate to own the solution to supplier information and data? And what, what should the pitch to, to the business be? Well, the point is, and everybody you know, which are touching uh, this area in the companies knows that it's usually not as such a system issue because you can have the best system uh, in the world. If people are putting some crap information in it, you know, you will get crap information at the end of it. So there is really uh, that recognition. And when, when we work on that project to say, well, you know, the fact that our data are not accurate, the fact that we are not able to ensure we have no risk, uh, the fact that we are not able to uh, to, for example, having just the email of the supplier. So if you want to send a mass email to the supplier, you, you, you have to collect them manually because you don't have a system to do that. People understand very well that it's, it's not sustainable. It's something, it's a pain point that you keep within your organization and, and people are struggling to do that, to really, uh, you know, make it work easily. And, and when we propose that and when we say, you know, we want to have a solution that will allow us to collaborate much more directly with the supplier, where we will have the contact people directly in the system, meaning if I want to send an email to all my supplier tomorrow, I can do it. That you will have the data up to date. So when you want to pay a supplier, you will not an issue because the bank details are not up to date. That's immediately resonate and that's resonate on the buyer side. That's resonate on the uh, integrity team, that's resonate with the financial accounts payable team. So that's that's easy. I mean, everybody who, who work with the vendors and, and in the procurement process knows that that's, that's one of the key issues on how we, uh, we manage those type of, uh, of process. That sort of leads me into my next question, actually, talking about those um, 
different uh, stakeholders within the organisation. What would the advice be that you would give for anyone who needs to articulate the vision of, of such a project? So do you sort of talk about the efficiency gains that, that you mentioned there? Um, is it about becoming customer of choice? What's the sort of overarching uh, statement that you want to make to the organisation? Well, it's, it's, as usual, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, the, the main thing, or the first thing that, that come to mind when we, when we, when we explain you know, what we want to do is accuracy of the data. Uh, again, not managing the things centrally with a system, uh, not having a portal when supplier can update their, their data means that very, very quickly in an organization, you, you get in your system data which are not accurate. For example, you have an obsolete contact to the supplier. You have an, an obsolete uh, bank detail. Uh, you have an obsolete uh, address or tax number or things like that. And all of that is creating workload. So putting back this accuracy as, as the, the first criteria means at the end that you will increase your efficiency, not on managing the vendor, which is a good thing, but managing the overall end-to-end -end process, you know, uh, procure to pay process if you want, because that will be things that will be solved by itself within the tool and within the, 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 the process. Uh, one of the other area I mentioned, which was critical, is the risk management. Again, now, you know, the, the supplier and more and more global, uh, all the uh, fraudster are also more and more uh, global, and they have every day new ways to, to, to try to uh, uh, to trick company uh, in terms of, you know, giving a wrong bank account so that uh, the money you, you pay to a supplier will go to their bank account and not to the supplier, or to be able to, uh, the, you know, change the direction of some of the flows that we have, that it's very important to build a consistent process and to make sure we have a way to monitor it and to ensure it's, it's staying up to date all the time. And putting this type of solution in place, you know, is, it's also a big, big factor for, uh, for the management to make sure that we are in control about that. Uh, the, the last piece, it's linked to uh, a little bit what I said earlier on the payment and, and finance and how you, you can improve your payment cycle and process payment. You know, uh, Mondelez is trying very hard to make sure we pay our superior uh, on time. You know, we, we, we trust our supplier. We, we try to partner with them. And, and, and one of the agreement is that, you know, we have a contract with some payment terms, but we want to, to be able to pay all the time at the payment terms. And when we look at the challenge on that, you know, uh, one of them is, is directly the fact that the data might not be accurate in the system. And putting those things in the system is helping us to reduce uh, the, the, the risk of paying late a supplier, which is, uh, which is uh, very important. Uh, maybe one, uh, uh, another point which is important for us, and you mentioned it a little bit, is the innovation, collaboration and partnership with supplier. Uh, more and more, you know, uh, of course, pre uh, productivity is still a priority in procurement. You know, that, that's a done deal. I mean, you, you need to, uh, to try to, to buy the things the cheapest as possible. But partnering with the supplier to increase uh, the innovation with the supplier, to increase the collaboration, to make sure we work much more closely with them is also very important. And what you want when you do that is to make sure that the administrative work is, is not a hurdle to do that well. And uh, putting in place a, a central solution like Supplier Central is helping us to build a connection, a better connection with the supplier, meaning that when buyer and supplier meet together, they don't talk about how can I get the right data? Can you send me the right dashboard? Uh, can we review when we are on our action plan and things like that? Because everything is in the system itself. And that means that now the supplier and the buyer are working about how can we do things better? How can we collaborate? How can we do more uh, innovation and things like that? So really having a purpose in their meeting, which is not managing the data, but really uh, bringing a better future for, uh, for the collaboration with them. 
and I, you sort of um, alluded to this in the uh, in the answer that you gave there. But I'd also be interested to know specifically as as part of the business case, what sort of metrics you might be thinking about that perhaps should be included in order to support the the vision or the or the story. Yes, so one of the things, so, so there's multiple uh, parameters that, that, that you will, so, so we have an efficiency gain, of course, uh, in, in, in the process, uh, because a lot of things that before was done manually are doing automatically. So uh, one of the parameters we have, you know, is, is how much uh, efficiency we can bring uh, to that process. And that's always an important parameter. You know, you don't want the new process to take more time than before, and you you expect that uh, by bringing some automation, uh, you will reduce a little bit the, the workload related to that. So that that's definitely one of that. Uh, we have a, a, a parameter also on the effectiveness, and that's been the accuracy of your data. So making sure that when we do the data, when we when the supplier enter their data, or when we ask the supplier to do something it's not right the first time and that's part of the tool which is also important so we have uh, a measure within Mondelez when we we, we have some uh, uh, accuracy type of validation of the data so making sure for example the, the phone number are correct the, the bank account are correct and things like that and we measure that and, and we put that as uh, you know improving that effectiveness of the thing so things are done right the first time um, you have uh, another thing which is very important for our buyers and our user in general is the end-to-end -end time process to manage something. So, you know, creating a supplier, uh, it's taking some time. You know, you need to do some compliance checks and validation. Uh, but our objective is to try to reduce that time as much as possible. You know, uh, before uh, our Super Central project, we were between two and three weeks to create a supplier end to end. Uh, we are now below two weeks and we continue to work. Uh, and my objective is to get that below one week to create a supplier. We are not yet there, but because we still have some automation to, to build and some process to revamp a little bit. But the objective is really to speed up the creation. Um, the same on the change on the supplier data. Make sure that we have an efficient process that will that will bring you know less time to make a change in in, uh, in the system so that uh, uh, we can make sure we uh, we work efficiently with um, with the suppliers. One parameters and that's a little bit project related uh, that we use as a KPI is adoption because as, as you know the same as. Uh, when I say earlier, if you if you uh, put crap in a system, you know, don't expect to get something right at the end. The same thing, if you have a great system but not, nobody is using it, uh, then <laughs> you know uh, you spend a lot of money for 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 maybe nothing. So what we put in place is is two parameters. So during the project, is we have uh, a parameter ensuring that people are going to the tool. So we had the old process, we had the new process. So one of the parameters we put the first year when we during the implementation is to make sure that the old process was not used any longer. So uh, and now we have in, in most of the region, because again, we, we just finished some of the deployment, but for the one which already deployed, we have 100% of the process going to the new tool, which is good. But what we want as well is to make sure that the supplier will go to the tool. Uh, you know, and I talk to my team all the time is a little bit that that, you know, the, the, the way you manage a marketing campaign. It's always good to have a first buy, but what you want is a repeated buy. So you want people to buy again and again your, your, your product. It's exactly the same when you implement a solution like Super Central. Your supplier will all go, always go there the first time because again, you will have them there. You need to sign up with that new portal so they will sign up. But if they stay like that, that means your data will start to become obsolete very quickly. So what we put there is we are working on understanding how often the supplier is going to the portal every year. So we don't expect them to go every week or every day. Some will do because again, we will show them some information they need to, to look at. You know, for example, we will give them the status of their invoices. So your supplier love to know when they will be paid so they will be able to look at that. 
Uh, we will have, as I said, some collaborations or so some dashboard that they will be able to look, some action plan that they, we can fill up and, and, and give feedback. So, so you know, some of those big suppliers, when we have a, a very high collaboration, will come quite often. But we have also a very small supplier, you know, which we, we're using only a few times a year or things like that, or very low spend. But those one as well, we want to make sure that they keep their, their data up to date. So, so we have a metrics that we build. Uh, which is per month, you know, how many suppliers logged into the system. And our objective for the moment is to get at at least 25% of the supplier every month. So that's mean what we expect is in average, every four months, the supplier will at least log in once to the system. And our objective would be really to push that higher than that. It's, it's a lower end uh, uh, percentage if you want for the moment. You know, we want to, to test it and to see because we, we, uh, it's taking time to uh, to understand, you know, what we can expect, but the objective will be able to push that and by bringing more value to that portal, uh, making sure that portal is also a one stop shop for the supplier. So if they have to remember only one link from on the list to work with us, that will be that portal. We expect that that will go up in the future and that uh, that supplier will come. Maybe not every day, but you know, every week or every month to the two to make sure that they see what's new, what's what they need to validate, and at the same time check their data and be able to update. You know, one person left the company, you have a new person responsible for the quality, you update it in this in, in the in the super central. So we are aware who is your quality contact if we have a question about the product or things like that. So that's the type of things that that we we are looking at. We, we're looking, but but not in detail, you know, on on the cost to create a supplier and things like that. Is is not something we measure in detail because you know we haven't seen every company are measuring that a little bit differently, and so that's not something we can really compare and benchmark with other. Uh, but that's something, of course, with the cost to serve is something which is important. So we 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 are monitoring that, monitoring that as well, and if we gain efficiency on the on the uh, workload, then we should see also a, a reduction in the cost to serve uh, overall for managing the, the vendor master data. Well, it sounds like um, a lot of the, the data points are going in the right direction in terms of the end to end process, reducing the times there, um, having the hypotheses to test around uh, adoption, engagement, as you say, is a, a, an ongoing piece of work. Um, what advice would you give, therefore, to anyone who's formulating their business case for SIM uh, in terms of those value points? Because in, in a lot of cases, they won't be there or available as data points, perhaps, before you sort of begin to um, improve the quality of your data. So what advice would you give when you're kind of in those initial stages of, of building those data points? Well, I think what is important, uh, as you said, is it's difficult maybe at the beginning, but your Aziz situation is still super important. I mean, you know, when you want to build a business case, you need to really understand what's going on because that's that's the way you will be able to really understand what are your pain points and, and, and build something that will, will be really resonate with your stakeholders. Uh, I don't think there is a, a magic one that can uh, do that or that something will be valued for everybody, but it, it's it's really you looking at your at your process, uh, understanding you know how that's working, understanding how many systems you have, understanding if you have a, a standard process or not, because all of that will help you to uh, to build the business case and ensure that that you uh, you solve the right problem. Uh, for us, you know, when we when we build the business case, uh, we already have done a lot of things before. We already have centralized the process and so on. So we were already in a very better position compared to other companies that I benchmark with. But still, you know, even by putting that global process, that's that's helped us even to find out that there was other issues, and that's the fact that we have a standard process was pretty good, but that was not bringing us all the way to bright in terms of collaborating with the supplier in terms of managing and having uh, accurate data from our suppliers. Um, so I think you know it's very important to go in that direction to, to really look at it. Uh, 
to be bold in the expectation. You know, we uh, we need to think. You know, as you say, master data is quite uh, uh, based. If you want, if your master data are not right, don't expect the rest to work well. Okay, and people might might see issue in, in, in again the payment of the invoices, in be able to send a PO to a supplier, uh, be able to recall the material uh, or to uh, to push complaints to a supplier if there is a lot which is not correct, and all of that, all of that, you know, people might not think that it's linked to the master data, but if you if you think about it, if you do a root cause analysis on all those type of issues that you can see within your your organization, you will find out that. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them is linked to the fact that your master data has some issues. So when, when you try to bring that back, that gives you really a lot of information that you can pull in your uh, business case. And that's directly helping you uh, to find the right solution. And again, small step will of course work, but but you will see that that you're missing something. So so again, my 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 advice is, is to try to really look at the end to end, and that's always what I'm doing when, I, when I'm working. You know, at my, as a process with my process app as a process owner, uh, looking at the end to end process. So, from how do I create my master data, but also how is it used in my different process up to the payment of the supplier, that will give you an overview of what is the size of what you can put in place, and and will really help to build the business case, and and that's quite easy. Again. You touching, you know, finance. You touching procurement. You touching manufacturing. So you touching a lot of of big area on the company that would be super interested in, to have a better process in place. Absolutely, I think that's uh, I think that's great advice. And the um, you mentioned there um, a point around the pain points, and mm -hmm. I just wondered um, from your perspective and thinking about that sort of end to end vision that you mentioned. What are for you some of the, the key capabilities that you think people should be looking for when evaluating all of the different options that are out there that are available for uh, supplier information management? What are some of the key things that they should bear in mind? Yeah, so when we thought about, you know, and when we, we, we created the, the RFP about, you know, defining what did we want, in terms of, of, of process. Uh, the first thing for me is to make sure that the tool we select will not be a constraint for us, meaning that you can always have things, and, and you know, in the, in the world today, things are changing very often. So you might have things that are not existing this year that will exist next year and that you will want to take because that will add value. And so you need to select to make sure that you, you build a solution which is expandable, uh, which can be uh, connected with other systems, uh, which are open in terms of interface, um, and which has a vision as well to uh, increase in terms of scope. Uh, so that that's my my first thing because for me that's that's what we look at because you can find a lot of solution in the market that that might do that uh, you know that vendor master well but when you start to think collaboration when you start to think one stop shop for the supplier when you start to think innovation uh, then you start to be blocked by by some options you say well yeah but you cannot do that yeah but this one you can do it only that way. And that's, you know, limiting the kind of creativity you have, have to really put uh, the tool and the process uh, as, as really an enabler for your procurement organization uh, to, uh, to succeed and to really uh, bring more value uh, to the company. So, so that's, that's the first thing for us when we looked at it is, is really find something which is open and, and with a vision that that is is right and that's really looking to 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 make the supplier in the center of the of the solution uh, the second thing which is always important is the user experience what is very very important you know is that uh, the, your your supplier will connect to the tool your requester so people who will request the creation of a new supplier 
uh, your people, for example, from accounts payable that might have to go in, in, in the tool to, to check uh, information like bank detail, uh, your tax team that will connect to the tool to validate tax data, uh, your compliance team who might be the one, you know, uh, approving uh, a risk or, or uh, for a supplier and so on. All those people, they are not expert in, in that, so they will not spend eight hours a day in the tool. So we need to make sure that when they go to the tool, when they look at it, they see something super easy. And, and you know, now there is always you know, the, the comparison with the, uh, the iPhone or the iPad and things like that. When, when you have a new app in those type of tools, you know, nobody is giving you two hours training to see how you can use it. You know, you, you don't go it and you figure out by yourself. And the idea for us was the same. So make sure you look at the user experience, maybe you look at how the tools works, how your supplier can connect to it, so that it's make a, a, a good experience. Because if it's good, they will come back. If it's too complex, you know, that would be very difficult to get them back to the tool. So, so that's, um, that's the second thing you, uh, you want to look. And then there is, the integration piece with your ERPs. So you might want some tool that would be included in the ERPs, and, and maybe in that case, uh, you might have less functionality, but then you don't have integration issue because that's part of the ERP. But if, if you want, you know, uh, uh, a better tool or a state-of-the-art tool, you know, you will see that it's most of the time, at least it's, it might not be your ERP itself. It might be some better solution. You know, we, uh, as we said, we, we picked X. Uh, for that, because we thought that was doing much better than what we can do with our ERPs. But then you need to connect them, because again, the, the vendor master data is not a standalone activity. It's just the starting point for any other activity within the company. And so we need to make sure that when you think about the solution, you, you think about you know how easy will that be to integrate? How easy will that be to add a new ERP in the future if we have an acquisition or to cut an ERP if you have a divestiture and so on. And for us, that was also one of the key parameters, which was more a little bit system driven, but that was pretty cool because that's only if, if all of those working together that we will be able to achieve the efficiency that we expect and ensure you know, that uh, all the great data we build in Super Central will be available in uh, the down system, you know, that could be RP, that could be other tools that, that uh, you need the, the vendor master data in. So I think that will be the three main area I will, I will, uh, I'm thinking of for that. Okay, and I think, uh, yeah, they're fantastic three areas to, to cover. And one of the things that you um, mentioned there was actually um, the wider point as well about bringing value uh, to, to the whole company. And I just wondered, Within a, a process such as this, how do you ensure that all of your stakeholders are on board throughout the process so as you're developing um, and moving towards implementing a solution? Obviously, it's a journey for, for the company to, to go on. So how do you bring your uh, stakeholders? Who should they be and how do you bring them along on that journey? Yeah, so. The, the first thing, you know, it, it's, it's really to 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 bring that, you know, it's when you do develop the business case with them and you make sure that that they are part of, of the decision and they understand, you know, the benefits they will get out of the of the solution. When you develop the solution uh, and when you build it is also to make sure they are including in the design phase. Uh, we have done a lot, for example, and, and, and especially when you have a very specific area or very complex or, or not you know behind the scene type of area that uh, not a lot of people knows you know i mentioned earlier you know for example the tax team uh you know tax team is a very small piece of the process but it's usually different per country so we don't send the record for each tax team because some tax are very easy and, and there is nothing to do the superior just put their tax number and uh, but there is some countries, you know, when there's uh, withholding tax rules and things like that, and we have to go in the, to the tax team. And the tax team in Brazil, for example, and what they expect and the data they want to review is different from the tax team, I don't know, in Canada or, or, or in, in the US or in France. 
And that means that you need to really make sure you partner with them so that you're able to understand clearly their need and build a tool and a solution that you say, you know, this is what you want you. This is exactly what we bring you. And potentially even easier than what we were doing in the past, because in the past, they didn't have any automatic workflow. They didn't have any uh, clear process. So that's mean the people were sending email and trying to make sure they, they understand what they have to do. Uh, so so that, that that's an example. So, so for those type of people trying really to be partner with them. And I know Accounts Payable was uh, one of them as well. Compliance team was another one that we really work with them. So that's the, the things to make sure we have a, we have a good uh, understanding. Of course, the people who are managing the, the data, uh, you know, so the, the vendor master data team was also, of course, all, all the time involved on that because we are the one knowing the best, the current process and the current uh, uh, specific requirement, uh, legal requirement in the country versus another. Uh, then we go back, you know, if you think about the buyers, of course, we, we had some buyer involved in that. Uh, requester, we had few requesters involved. We have created what uh, uh, what we call, and we use that a lot in Mondelez, a community of practice. When we bring people from different regions, from different uh, function, and they participate, uh, you know, during the, the, the creation of the project that was once a week. When we are bringing with them ideas about, you know, we want to do it that way, we plan to do that, uh, that sort of things. Uh, we have free option to do that. What do you think will be the most efficient? So trying to make sure that we bring, and again, you cannot bring the full company, yeah, but you, you bring some key people that, that are, uh, wants to participate, wants to, uh, to make sure the tool will be uh, in the process will be the right one. And that helps you to build a solution that, that you are pretty happy with and that you can start to push. Uh, we also contacted few suppliers to get also their feedback on, on the tool so that we can really understand, you know, how is that working for them and uh, is it easy or not to, uh, to, uh, to set up themselves in the system to, uh, to update their data. Uh, and when you have that, so when you have built your solution, then there is a massive change management uh, because of course, uh, you know, people are used with the old uh, solution or the manual solution, and, and then you want them to change their way of working. So you need really to make sure that they are aware of the new solution, they understand the new solution, and they use it. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned in the, in the KPIs, one of them is really adoption. And that's something that, again, only the first year, but that we look in detail to make sure that people were shifting to the new solution and not keeping the old practice. And again, we were pretty happy with the result. You know, after three months, we had 90% done with the new solution, for example, for a specific country or region. So, so that went pretty, pretty well. Uh, but that's the things you need, you need to measure. Uh, we did a change also in who is allowed to request a new supplier. You know, in the past, that's where, that was always have to go through the buyer first. Uh, which which was a little bit complex to manage. Now uh, we ask the requesters, so the people in the business who needs a, a new supplier, and and that's mainly for the small one and big one. You have always RFP, you have always process. But when you think very small supplier, sometimes the business has a very specific need, so they they are now allowed to request the creation. But then we have always our procurement team, which is the gatekeeper. So we train the, 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 our buyers to say, well, you know, now you will not have to do that work or doing all the, the work up front. We will give that to the function because the function was anyway, the people who have to give information to the buyer. So we give them that directly to, the, to those uh, requesters. They are happy because they can make their request. But also, again, in the change management and in the communication, we make clear that buyer is the only one who can approve or reject. So if there is not any justification or a good justification for having a new supplier, you know, if we already have another one doing the same thing, or if that area should not be covered by a specific supplier or so on, the buyer has the ability to reject and say, well, you know what? I don't think that's a good idea to add that supplier. I recommend you go with that one that we have already agreed and have a good deal with. So, so that's those type of things. You know, the change management in all those projects are always critical. Uh, as well, people who are doing projects as we were seeing, you know, even if you have a, a, a current solution or old solution, which is not very efficient, 
the change itself, even if it's to move to a most, more, much more efficient uh, solution, is still difficult because people know how the old solutions are doing. They can do it more, uh, more or less, you know, uh, inside it. So it's hard for them to, to, to change. So we make it easier. We communicate a lot. Uh, we make it, you know, a lot in, in picture and graph and things like that. We send them some uh, weekly uh, quick bites, we call so saying, oh, by the way, do you know you can do that? Oh, by the way, do you know that uh, if you uh, if you do it that way, uh, that that will make it easier? Oh, by the way, we have also some uh, training uh, to help you to understand the specific things that you might want to do. So really trying to to build a way to to give people, you know, uh, not that they have to go to the tool, but they they are uh, happy to go there and to uh, to do that because that's that's easy and that's weak for them to manage. So change management, again, as any project anyway, it's uh, it's super important and, and you have really to make sure that uh, because that type of uh, vendor management is touching probably 60% of the people in the company, uh, you know, everybody in an office, uh, the management at the plant and so on. Uh, you need to make sure that you, you invest a lot in that and having some uh, very uh, easy way for people to recognize the change and to uh, adopt the change. Well, that's a, a fantastic piece of advice to, to end on there. So thank you very much, Stefan, for uh, providing your, your insight today and sharing some of the experiences um, with us. Um, I've had a look at the questions as we've gone through the webinar. Uh, you, you've covered most of them and we're, we're sort of at the uh, the end of the session now. I think one of the only ones that has come in that I think is very interesting that we perhaps haven't covered is um, one around how it's been received by the wider business, so feedback and also any any sort of feedback from, uh, from suppliers um, and any kind of lessons around that for, for procurement as a, as a team to to learn. So I just wondered if uh, you could comment just, just very quickly on, on that. Yeah, so uh, again, as it's a change, you know, mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, some mixed feedback at the beginning. You know, people uh, wanted to, uh, you know, sort, you know, why do we need to change? But after the, the, the beginning step, I think we have very, uh, very quickly some good feedback from uh, from the different team and from uh, some of the supplier, you know, uh, you know, when we have been able to create a supplier, you know, in, I think in, 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 in more or less in, in two days, in one of the case we've done, you know, people were super happy about that, that, uh, you know, that have to have everything working well at the same time. But, but, you know, we, we, we were managed to do that. So, so people have been able to see, you know, the benefits that the tool was, uh, was, was bringing, uh, one of the main recognition for me from the business is they want to use the tool more. I cannot tell you how many emails per week I receive to say, well, can we add that? Can we do that? Can we connect that? Can we integrate that? So we have everything and people from quality, from manufacturing, from procurement, asking me and my team to add functionality. So that means people understood the benefits of that tool, understood that that's really bringing that uh, easy way to connect with supplier. And we get those new things all the time. So for the moment, my more my biggest issue is how can I keep with the pace? So we, we have to prioritize to tell to people, you know, yes, we will do that, but maybe not that first half of the year, maybe we'll do that the, the next half of the year. So we, we, we have to prioritize the demand with the number of demand we're receiving to include in the tool because we see that that's the way to go and that's the right way to manage it. So th that has been really a game changer. I mean, never before I have people ask me, well, can you help me to do that uh, on, on that space of founder master? You know, we were trying to make it as, as little as possible because that was cumbersome and, and people didn't like it. Uh, now people really want to do it and, and, and they want to have more. They, they see the benefits and the easiness that has bringing to their processes. And again, not only procurement, but also manufacturing quality and so on. Thank you very much. OK, well, we're, we're at the, uh, the end of the session. Um, so thanks again to Stefan uh, for, for your time today. Um, and thank you to everybody who's participated in today's event and uh, we do look forward to, to seeing you again soon.